All right, my beautiful people, man. Good, good evening. Good evening on this terrific Thursday. Man, it's your boy ERGJ back with another production. Uh, man, tonight, man, it's a very special night. It's the return. That's right, it's return. The year of the return, matter of fact, but it's the return uh, of the Black Off the Speaker Forum. Uh, I'm your host, ERGJ, and we'll be getting to some things tonight. So hopefully you guys are ready to support your very own. Uh, I know we got to give YouTube and Facebook a little bit of time to let you guys know that we are live, but yes, we are live. While you guys are connecting, man, go ahead and let us know where you're connecting from, what city, what state, what country. Uh, we're broadcasting across the World Wide Web, so we know you could be joining us from anywhere, and we like to know just how far our reach is here today. Uh, tonight, you're going to have up to five, maybe six, uh, black authors who will be sharing with you their story, their work, and how you can support what they do on the Black Author Speaker Forum. You'll also learn a little bit about this thing called authorship, because maybe, I just maybe, you got a book in you. Uh, we all know that we got a testimony. The question is, will we write it down? And so we have an opportunity to do that. And I believe that a book is a part of your legacy. It's a way to be able to transfer your experience, your knowledge, your wisdom uh, to the next generation. That's why the good book is a book. <laughs> That's right. That's why the good book is a book, man. Good evening to you, man. Lisa Puerto, thanks so much for joining here today on uh, the Black Author Speaker Forum. So again, guys, we are just super, super excited. I haven't done this in a while. You guys get a chance to know a little, about, a little bit about me and my authorship and my journey into uh, book writing, which uh, for me is about two years ago. Uh, and then you'll get a chance to meet our guest here tonight. Uh, man, some phenomenal guests with some phenomenal work. And if we're going to support, or, uh, you know, could black folk do read, by the way? Yeah, we do. You put it in the book, we'll find it. And that's right. Or put it in the ebook, we'll find it too. Or put it in an audio book, we'll listen to it. <laughs> that's right, man. But we got to know that we exist. We got to know what we've done. And so we want to do a good job of just letting you guys know that we are here today. Hey, I'm not going to delay. I just want to make sure we had a little bit of time to prime the pump. But y'all know what time it is, man. Mr. DJ, hit the music. New, new, new black, new, new black Wall Street Book Club. Evan Jefferson, brother, much love. Educating, elevating, because in knowledge is the power and we'll never give it up. <laughs> Literature is for the masses. Where to put your money down now? How to watch your assets? Yeah, uplifting others is a passion. My brother Evan, he will turn it into action. New Black Wall Street Book Club. You should come read with come us. us. Yeah, we comprehend and discuss. Yeah. We all just come together. There's no limit for There's us. No limit for us. Huh. It comes your host, New Black Wall Street. Book Evan, take it away. New Black Wall Street. <laughs> New Black Wall Street Book Club. All right, my beautiful people, man. Thanks so much for joining us here tonight on the New Black Wall Street Book Club as we present the Black Author Speaker Forum. That's right, the Black Author Speaker Forum. Hey, guys, once you guys know that Black folk do read, if you put in a book, we absolutely will find it. I'm your host, ERGJ, your certified financial educator, CEO of ERGJ Enterprises, ERGJ Black Bazaar, and international best selling author of the book, The Black Billionaires Club. That book there is a study of black wealth. That book there is a study of the 12 richest black people in the world today and how they built their wealth. And I just truly believe that if you want to be wealthy, that's a big if, by the way, because I realize that everybody don't want to be rich. But if you do, I recommend that you study wealthy people. Well, you can start that study by simply going to the website, theblackbillionairesclub.com. That's right, theblackbillionairesclub.com. Pick up your hard copy, your soft copy. Ebook is available, and it's also available in French for our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. You can get that in ebook and also audio book as well. TheBlackBeingUsClub.com. Pick up your copy today. Man, our sponsors here tonight, man. First, we got uh, we got a Big Sis Media. Uh, of course, everything that you see ERGJ is backed by or powered by Big Sis Media. I want you to go to check out BigSisMediaGroup.com. It's a full service creative design agency with tools available to help you communicate with your audience through visual and digital media. I keep telling people, hey, I'm not a 10 in every area. So I hire where I'm not excelling, and Big Sis Media takes care of all of our digital stuff, all of my websites, all that stuff as well, and they can help you too. They're here to watch over your most critical needs like a Big Sis would. Man, check out the website, www.bigsismediagroup.com, www.bigsismediagroup.com, and get your digital needs met like a Big Sis would. Well, guys, tonight, man, I am super excited again here for uh, Black Author Speaker Forum that we have here tonight, man. You guys go ahead and hit that like button, that share button, all the good stuff. Let people know that we're here because we want to do a good job of making sure that other people know that we got some super dope artists and speakers that look like us and they got a message to share and they care. 
So go ahead and hit the like button and share button if you care. That's right. Hit the like button and share button if you care. Hey, I'm not going to delay because we want to give our guests enough time and more than enough time to share with you who they are, what they do, and why they do what they do. So let me bring our guests into the fold here tonight. Let me get, I mean, unmute everybody. We're going to bring them on up in here. We're going to do this thing, man. Bang. There we go. Bang. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, man. Hey, good evening to you, man. Thanks so much for joining us here, guys, on the Black Author Speaker Forum. We're going to pull up your names and stuff so everybody knows who you are. We got uh, Miss Erica Moore is here with us here tonight. Mr. Trevor uh, Cassaberry is in the house. Mr. Derek Alford and uh, H. Cortez, a financial health mentor, is with us here tonight. Man, thank you guys so much for joining. We will start with Miss Erica Moore. Everybody talking at the same time. Miss Moore, good evening to you. Thanks so much for joining. How are you doing tonight? I'm better than amazing and hoping you are too. Absolutely, man. Well, Ms. Moore, uh, this may be the first time that people are uh, are privy to you or experiencing you. If you could uh, share, with the, uh, share with our audience here tonight who you are, what you do, and why you do what you do. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Erica Timora. I'm a pastor. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. But above all, um, I'm an author slash um, co-founder of our publishing company. And I enjoy writing. Writing is something that 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 soothes my spirit it's something it's a gift something that I, i'm great at and i love it i love doing it for the fun of it and this is why i write so i can um help enlighten and educate other people and also bring laughter into their lives that's why i write absolutely that's why i write man mr trevor casper man thanks so much for joining us here tonight young brother how you doing tonight i'm doing great thank you for having me man, absolutely man this may be the first time people get to experience you as well man if you could share with us who you are what you do and why you do what you do right. hello everybody my name is trevor cassaberry from the bronx new york i'm the ceo of cassaberry consulting which is a corporate consulting firm we offer business investment and negotiation consulting and more importantly tonight i'm the author of for the hustler Absolutely. We're going to find out what Ford the Hustle is in just a second, man. Mr. Derek Alford, man, thanks so much for joining us here tonight on the Black Author Speaker Forum. How you doing tonight, brother? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Man, absolutely phenomenal, man. If you could share with the people, man, who you are, what you do, and why you do what you do, man. All right. Peace, everybody. My name is Derek Alford. I'm the author of Choose Wisely. Uh, it's my book that I wrote. I'm an author. I also own rental property in my city. I invest in stocks and bonds, but I I really um I wrote my book just because I'm really passionate about helping brothers, you know, any ways I can. And one of the best ways I can help is helping them choose the right partner, which is why I wrote my book. So, you know, I know we'll talk about that soon, but that's a little bit about me. All right. Fantastic, man. Thanks so much for joining, man. The uh, H Cortez, the financial health mentor. This ain't our first rodeo, man. But if you could, for those that may not know who you are, you could share with the people, man, who you are, what you do and why you do what you do, brother. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thank you so much, Evan, for having me, man. You know, I love rocking with you, man. You're doing great work, so I appreciate everything that you're doing. Uh, but I am H. Cortez, the one and only financial health mentor from WealthCreationPlaybook.com. And my entire mission in life is to empower people economically through the basis of financial literacy with a strong emphasis on personal brand development and entrepreneurship. And really, I just think there's a void in uh, our community in particular, but um, throughout the rest of the country as well, and what it really takes to build wealth from scratch. And that's what I want to get across to uh, the people, because there are some strategies that you can put in place. You just got to know what to do and how to do it. Absolutely, man. Thanks so much for being here tonight. We may have one more guest, guys. She uh, gets here a little bit late because she's getting off work. She's doing her thing, but we're going to continue to show nonetheless. Now, I will say this, guys. Uh, for our audience, um, this is a, the Black Author Speaker Forum is all about highlighting our Black authors and speakers uh, that are in our community. Uh, these are people that put in work out in order to make a difference in some way, form, or fashion. And we'll find out what those differences are that they're trying to make here tonight. They're also going to be discussing tonight about the business of authorship as well, uh, because they have gone through some journey to get to the place where they wrote their first book or first whatever. And, uh, and we kind of want to know that as well, because some of you guys may have a book in you. And you want to kind of know what that looks like as far as the path that they've taken that you might be taking as well. Uh, and it's really just about highlight, man. We have a book club and uh, and really, uh, you know, I wanted to extend it to something where we could bring other people in. And I think this is a great platform to do it. For those that don't know who I am, I'm an author as well. I got I told you guys that international bestselling author. Uh, the, the interesting thing about my story is that I actually sold about uh, 1,500 copies of that book before I ever wrote it. And so I teach people. Mm -hmm. Um, how to make money with what they have done, what they created, 
And I have never sold book, a book yet on Amazon. So I pushed it all myself. I'm self-published and I'm also self, uh, what is it? Uh, just, just self-distribution as well. And uh, and if you just do the math, uh, you know, you kind of know what kind of money we're talking about when it comes to uh, the book that you, the, 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 the work, your copyrighted work, your legacy that you have shared with the world. And so I talk a lot about sales and marketing. That's my niche. Um, but I'm also an author as well. And I went through that process also. Miss Erica Moore, I guess we got to start with you, man. I'm pretty sure you yeah. got, you have a lot that you have created over whatever period of time. But talk to us a little bit about your journey into your first published piece of work, what that was and what that journey was for you. Wow. So the first book that I've written that, that we published, I wrote it back in 2005. I wrote it during a very catastrophic time in my life. So make a long story short, 2005, I write the book. It took me like three months to write it. Um, it sat for like four years. Then I had it edited in 2009. Still did nothing with it. Met my husband in 2013. The first thing I did was I um, emailed him my manuscript. And when we finally met, he, um, you know, he printed it out for me and he said, we're going to publish it. And um, it was kind of hard at first because, you know, we was trying to find, you know, um, an economical way so we can publish it. Right. So it was expensive. So I had to borrow from my retirement fund slash my 401k plan, which we kind of spent all this money to come to find out it was a better way. It was an easier way. So I thank God for him because he pushed me. You know, he was the first person to say, hey, you, you're good. You got some great gifts. We need to do something with it. So the first book I read is called The Mother's Time to Heal. And it's dealing with um, how do you um, get over molestation, especially at the hands of um, a loved one, the people that's supposed to protect you, the people that's supposed to, you know, love on you and nurture you. And they're allowing this to go on. Right. So do we do we. You know, do we accept this? Do we run away from it? Can we forgive? Can we heal? So that's 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 the journey of my first book. Um, it took me like nine years and it did real great. Um everyone is saying that's my story, that's my story. And it was my story that um I needed to share. So that was my journey of my first book. Wow, Eric, I can see you my you you passed the problem. I've got goosebumps all over me when you start talking. I don't know what's going on, man. That's a, I can feel that. I can feel that one right there, man. Let me get some you. I come over to you, Trevor, man. Lisa Puerto, thanks so much for joining. For those that are joining, go let us know where you're connecting from, what city, what state, what city, what state, what country go at possibly here on a black author speaker forum. Uh, just like know where you are connecting from, guys. Let me catch up on these comments. Uh, apparently, trans that's right, translate as well. Good evening to you, Miss Bethany Rucker. Thanks so much. Oh, Faith Love said, I want it, I want it, or you want to? I just need to know that comment. you want it to, or you want to publish the book, Miss Ava. Thanks so much for joining us. BBC fam is up in the house. Hey, Derek Alford is a very handsome, okay, <laughs> okay, brother. <laughs> hey, Derek, you better choose wisely, bro. Hey, I, I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I appreciate it though. She's watching too, she watching. <laughs> Eric, hey, man. man, good afternoon. Okay, uh, okay, fantastic, man. Sherry, thanks so much for sharing. Miss Vivian Reed is up in the house from Brooklyn, New York. So we got somebody else up in New York as well. Uh, Adolf Moore, man, thanks so much for joining. Go, Pastor, is that your husband, Mr. Adolf? Yeah. All right. Yes. I'm talking about it's, uh, the power of partnership. You see how far I'm at? Eight years of, of hibernation. And, and Mr. Moore come in and say, we're going to do this thing, girl. Go on, get your stuff out yeah. there. <laughs> he did. He did. He did. I'm talking about, man. Miss T. Smith, thanks so much for joining as well. Hey, for those in the comments, man, if you let me know, are you an author? Because you might need to be on the next show as well. Are you an author? Do you have published work? Let us know that in the comments below. We want to make sure we represent. This is We're going to be representing for the authors and the speakers here tonight. Man, Mr. Trevor Casabere, man, thanks so much for joining again, guy. You could tell us a little bit about your journey into your first published piece of work. Right. So again, I'm Trevor Casabere from the Bronx, New York. Uh, my first book is for the hustler, and what made me write this book um, first off was one owning my corporate consulting business, and I knew I knew I needed to get more clients. Uh, one of my main clients and my favorite client is my wife who owns Amacosa LLC, which is a self-publishing and editing company. And her niche is, te is teaching entrepreneurs how to use a book to boost business, uh, which is exactly what I did with this book, which is a motivational quote book. It includes 50 quotes, 50 passages, you know, that pertain to each quote. 
uh, and highlights 50 small black owned businesses. And the main point of the book is to teach people how to identify and monetize every skill set, not only that they have, but everybody else in their network. Absolutely. Now, if you could, how to tell us a little bit about what you, what your what your uh, what your wife does. How to use a book to build or to increase business, that was, or to boost business. How right. to use a book to boost business? Just give us a, a snip, a small concept, a small snippet on that concept of you. Because I tell you, it, it, everybody here, H. Cortez will tell you he uses a book to boost his business. Mister Offer, same thing. I don't know if that's quite. I know you're maybe a little bit different for you. Miss Moore, you're using books to boost your business. Yes, absolutely. So, talk to us a little bit about that concept. Everybody put a concept of boost your business, uh, Mr. Casabay. The concept of using a book or using your work, using your knowledge, using your wisdom, using your insight uh, to put it into something that's edible to be able to boost your business. Right. So uh, we broke it down into three types of books. One, a product book, which is typically used to inform your audience of what your product is and how to use it efficiently. Uh, second would be a memoir. So that's more so so you could relate to your audience. And then lastly, a motivational quote book, which would typically motivate your audience to, you know, kick in the gear to want to use your product or want to do whatever it is that you allow them to do. So because she specifically helps people write, typically her motivational quote book teaches people how to become uh, more confident decision makers, entrepreneurs and writers. So then they'll funnel back to either purchase her services or purchase another book. Absolutely. We're going to have it right on the next episode. So I'm excited to, uh, to, to, to talk to the duo as it relates right. to uh, this, this, this um, writing your books and your businesses that you run, man. Congratulations as well. Mr. Darren right. Alford, man, thanks so much for joining again, man. I to choose it, man. I, yeah, we're going to be talking to you a lot tonight. Oh, I don't know. I'm biased. I'm biased. Don't worry. <laughs> tell us a little bit about your journey into authorship, man. Oh, we frozen, Mr. Offer. I think we got. I think we're frozen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might be frozen. All right, man. We're gonna. Uh, you might want to. Uh, I don't know. Leave and come back. Try that. Not quite sure. There we go. All right, here we go. All right, y'all. Right, sorry, sorry, my bad, y'all. Um, some reason my Wi-Fi is not good in my area, so I, I heard you say my name. So if you could just uh, re repeat everything. Oh, no problem, man. If you could uh, share with us uh, about your journey into authorship. Oh, um, okay. So this book, y'all, I started writing this book when I was uh, still working a job. I worked at General Motors and um, I was working on this book. I really wasn't even going to write it, but my queen kept telling me, uh, she called me Booby. She was saying, Booby, you got to put your, your story in a book. So, you know, I had a notebook and I just was writing each chapter. I wrote a chapter and I just wrote like a bunch of you know, paragraphs about each each focal uh, focus point in my each chapter of the book. I kind of just did it old school, y'all. I was in a with a notebook pen. Every time I was on break, I was uh, outside or wherever I could in a quiet spot writing a chapter in this book. And what really made me write it was just the fact that you know all the stuff I was going through, and I always I'm a person that reflects on stuff that I did wrong. So I'm like, I know what I did wrong, but I got to help other people from making this mistake because it really changes your life when you have. You know, relationship with the wrong partner, and you have a child, and that person is trying to, you know, uh, cause harm to your life, and just make things challenging when you're trying to do the right thing. And you, you, you just gotta know a lot about yourself so you can do better and know what to look for, so you don't make the same mistake again. So that was my journey writing this book, y'all. Just notebook, pen, and having a good woman to uh, keep me encouraged because I did not know what I was doing, y'all. But here we are. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Hey, that's what's up, man. Keeping it real, man. When we when we when we did our first work, we didn't know what we were doing. But but the thing is, we were willing to do it. That's the thing, man. Question to God is, man, are you willing to do it? See, we're willing to do it. This is interesting to me, man. Miss Oliver, I'm gonna be getting your book, by the way. And I'm also again, I already talked about it. what she said so because I, I can't wait to go through your book as as a focal point of what we do, uh, because we're actually using another book, but I'm gonna come to yours probably around February. Um, but but willing to do it is a thing. So you were you were taking your you were using your lunch break right or your break right to uh to 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 empty your your soul and to create something uh for a create your legacy or start your legacy your book is gonna be part of your legacy that's gonna that can that travels way beyond your living days and i don't think people really understand the power of authorship it travels way beyond you you know when you when you go on your book can still be selling 
You know what I'm saying? And that could be a part of what your inheritance to your children, children, people really understand what we're talking right. about. You just think about Napoleon Hill and all these people, right? So, but you were willing to you were willing to sacrifice some time, breaks, lunches, whatever, to get it done, man. That that's absolutely phenomenal. You, and so many people won't do that. They're like they don't have the time. But you found the time, man. Talk a little bit about man making time for something so so important to you. I just it's just something that you gotta really want to do. And it's just like I'm I'm on a job, I'm getting paid, and it's cool, you know, you're making money, but it's like I'm doing something that I really don't like to do, but I really care about, you know, helping people. That's what one of my reasons I'm here. My purpose is to help people. So it's like, you know, any way I can help people, I want to do that. So this book is gonna do that. And it really hit me after I wrote this book that this book, like I have a son, so it's my grandkids can read my book, and my book will be here forever. It didn't hit me till I got done that this book will be here. Mm -hmm. Like it's like property. It's like it's intellectual property. It'll always be here. So it's just everybody should write a book. You know, if you feel like you need to do it, do it. It's gonna be hard, but you'll figure it out. And you know, my book is not super long, but it's all me, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm proud of it. My my mom read it, my family read it, everybody that read it is proud. And it's it got my name on it. It just feel good, you know. It feels real good. It's not man, man, we're going to talk about that too, man. The feeling of being the author. It's much bigger than, you know, whatever, all these words, Amazon. But that ain't that ain't nothing compared to the feeling that you have to have created your own for your own. H. Cortez, financial mentor, man. Uh, you know, I think you've written quite a few, a few things, but talk to us about your journey into authorship, brother. Absolutely, man. My, my first uh, uh, book, I think, the three core things have been mentioned already by the other authors talking about legacy, talking about uh, using a book to boost business. The way I like to phrase it is authority. Uh, and then you, you just talk about the fact that authorship opens up so many doors. So my first book uh, is Financial Health Traffic Report. And I wrote this book after being coached and mentored by some very wealthy people on some simple steps to build uh, wealth. And I was like, man, people need to know this. But also the challenge that I ran into was someone who's coming from a, uh, uh, being raised by a single mom, uh, not wealthy himself. What can I do to get people to listen to this message? Even though the message is channeled through me, it was actually from some very, very wealthy people. So I know the strategies work. I had helped uh, hundreds of people through this process and they got the results that I was telling them about. But one thing that the book did that I knew it would do because I had studied a little of this uh, uh, um, before is it gave me authority to where people would listen to my message a little bit more where uh, in the past it wouldn't. And you talk about collaboration I was in a place where I really was juggling with, do I step away from doing what I love, which is entrepreneurship and business and go off and get some certifications? Do I go get licensed series six and all this kind of stuff to have a better platform to teach this stuff? And I was like, nah, I don't have the time to do that because I'm still in full foundation laying mode of building my business. So what I decided to do was go ahead and write a book and the book, gives you that same authority, that same credibility, some of those same credentials as um, someone who is licensed and, and would have gone through uh, that whole process. So that was my journey into my first book. And then because I talk a little bit about some financial strategies as how taxes work, the other thing I did was I used the power of collaboration and I actually connected with a CPA and had him do the foreword so that solidified the uh, book as an authority in the space. So that's kind of how uh, I journeyed into my first uh, ever publication. And my whole purpose was to use it and leverage it uh, as a way to create authority for me in the financial education space, because I didn't want to take time away from what I was doing to go get certified and, and do a bunch of other stuff. 
Man, absolutely, man. That man, is some phenomenal stories. Everybody's going to come through this own their own pathway, man. Let's catch up on these comments. Miss Ever Goodrich, man, boss of MA. Thanks so much for joining, man. He already pushing the, the, the husband already get a book, get a book, and the website there as well. Going to be pulling it up in just a second, guys. This whole face love said I have the stories in my head that I need to put on paper and share with the world. Absolutely, uh, I've got some resources that can help you do that if you need some assistance with that. Uh, North Carolina's Lillington, North Carolina's representing here tonight, Miss Everett again. Miss A, he's like, he, uh, hey, we gonna, y'all gonna buy this book. <laughs> he's the first one up in the house, man. Atlanta, Georgia, Miss Bethany, Ru Bethany Rucker, thanks so much for joining. Uh, Booster Business, Booster Business, Booster Business, Miss Mankins Golden, thanks so much for joining. Uh, Miss May, okay, oh, Negus Z Amuru Trust, great book, bro. Thanks so much for joining, Mr. Negus. Uh, literacy, oh, she said, literary legacy. Look at that. I like that. Okay, now she said you immortalize self through published works, Miss Lisa Porto said. Man, caring about helping people. Absolutely. Hey, Miss Lisa Porto said, I define it as holding my brain in my hand. Holding my brain in my hand. Miss Beth Rex said, I'm working on my third book. All right, girl, you better get it, girl. Absolutely, man. Now, Mr. Uh, uh, Cortez, uh, Mr. C Mr. Thornton, has shared some couple things with us, guys. He was talking about um, how uh, the, the doors that open. Right. So I don't know how long you guys have been. Uh, your publications have been out uh, or how how many you have written. But uh, if you guys want to share a little bit about either either one or both. Um, again, I asked earlier that feeling uh, you, you got when you realize you got something special with this finished work. Right. It's one thing to start a thing. It's nothing completed. And then doors that have been open. Or how far, I mean, we go so many places here, and I'll share mine real quick, but doors that have been open since you have completed your work. Doors that have been open for you since you completed work. I'll tell you this, I, I never realized until I finished my work just how far it could go. My book is now being is now in seven different countries uh, mm. here in the United States, Australia, China, Nigeria, Ghana, uh germany uh that's how what i can think of right now that i've actually had to send the copy off or they have bought and so I, it's amazing like i probably never hit all those places but i've hit all those places you know what i'm saying like i may never step land of my foot on that land but my i have hit my spirit has hit those places and that's to me that's absolutely phenomenal i just never i just and I'll tell you guys a little bit about my story. I just, um, you know, I, I I study money. I'm a certified financial educator, just similar to H. Cortez. And um, two years ago, I was just reading the, the the Forbes list of the wealthiest people in the world. And I was like, okay, where the black folk at? <laughs> so, and so I started looking for them. And I said, okay, we, I see some people I ain't never heard of before. And I started looking and said, okay, is there some book about this? And, and then I couldn't find it. And then the thing hit me on the head and said, I guess you should write it. And I was like, yes, I'll do it. <laughs> and so I, I, I went to writing it. Um, uh, Cortez actually helped me. We did a, a pre uh, pre order launch on the book. And, uh, you know, 1,500 copies later, it was like, okay, I guess you need to write the book now because you need to get this thing out. And so I, I'm a guy that works under pressure. And uh, yeah, we was I was rushing to get it completed, get it published, and get it out. Uh, we had our launch in June of 2017, man. So that's a little bit about my story and uh, how far I have been able to reach the with, with with my work. And it's opened up a lot of doors. I've had a lot of speaking engagement. I do a lot of speaking, uh, uh, particularly on the book itself. And I use the book as a as a way to still mm -hmm. introduce wealth and financial literacy uh, because it's just simply things that wealthy people do. And wealthy people uh, study and wealthy people read that poor people don't. Mm -hmm. So, right. anyway, so Ms. Moore, uh, yes. what's that feeling when you finish your first work and, and, and what kind of doors have been opened up to you uh, now that you are a published author? Wow. So the feeling I got is like when I first read my book, I was like, wow, that's good. I have the feeling that I would have if I read someone else's book. It made me cry. It made me laugh. It made me visualize, you know, each character and what they was going through. And the door that has been opened while my eyes can't even imagine. Um, of course, you know, I'm a, I'm a pastor, so that's a platform for me. So um, I'm invited to um, speak um, 
on many levels, many platforms, women conferences, um, local, like the local libraries, I have an event that's coming up on the 20th of this month. So Mega Doors is open for me, even going back to my hometown, which I'm also from New York. I'm from Long Island, I'm Wine Dance, New York. And I was invited back to where I worked, where I graduated from high school, where I grew up at to come back and speak, you know, um, to the community. So I'm excited about that because now people are recognizing me, not just my husband's wife, Apostle Adolph Moore wife, or not just a pastor, but now they're seeing Erica. Oh, she speaks. Oh, she does have a voice. Oh, okay. Oh, her story is deep. We need to get her here. So doors have opened and I'm excited about that. Man, absolutely. I'm not just Apostle Adolph Bulls. Why y'all? <laughs> all right, now. Man, Erica got something to say. <laughs> Adolph opened them comments like, hey, sexy. <laughs> Wait till you get off that screen, baby. Wait till you get off that screen. <laughs> man, uh, oh, no. <laughs> Mr. Trevor, man, what about yourself, man? Uh, you know, uh, what was that feeling when you actually completed this thing? Or and, and, and what kind of doors have been opened up to you as you have become a published author? Yeah, so one, just getting the book in my hands and feeling that matte finish and seeing, you know, the actual finished product was like no other because, you know, I sell a, I sell a service for my business. So this is the first product that I actually got to sell. So, you know, it, it, it just opened up my brain to so much more. So like now I've even gotten uh, five um, public school teachers all in New York. Um, four of them I went to high school with, and one of them, she actually came to my first workshop that I ever did in 2017. And um, we're going to be working on the For the Hustler lesson plans in 2020 uh, to release it in an effort to, one, teach the five critical things that most students uh, suffer with when it comes to reading, writing, and mathematics, as well as uh, subconsciously and consciously uh, teaching business and investing vocabulary and methods at the same time. Uh, but not only that, like I, I'm looking to get into speaking engagements, but right now, you know, I, I'm also helping my wife getting it all. So she does a lot more public readings and things like that than I do. I'm also on the back end, you know, making sure the business structure and stuff is tight. And like yourself, when it comes to pre-ordering products, uh, I pre-ordered this book uh, just to help me get an idea of how many books I needed to get from Amazon in the beginning. So now I'm actually already... Um, offering pre-orders for volume two of the book, which would be yeah. called For the Hustler Volume Two. And the subtitle would be The Investment Versus The Investor. All right, now you're working on uh, number two. Fantastic, man, absolutely, man. Uh, congratulations to all you guys again. Uh, I got you, I got you, Mr. Moore, I got you, Mr. Moore. <laughs> Miss Allison, thanks so much for joining us here tonight, man. Again, guys, if you could hit that like button, that share button, let people know that you care. If you care about black authorship, want to make sure that we represent we, uh, go ahead and do that for us as well. Hit the like button, the share button, let people know that we're here. Mr. Alford, man, again, same question to you, brother, as it relates to uh, you completing, finishing that work after your after your queen pushed you. I'm pretty sure that was a special moment. That was a lot of a lot of a lot a lot of champagne here, a lot of bubbly going on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Talk a little bit about man that feeling that you got that you completed this thing that you have you know putting that that time and effort in between the 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 the, the breaks and the, the lunches and all that stuff, and now you're like done. And what kind of doors have opened up for you since that time? Uh, well, to touch back on uh, how it felt, like I told you, I felt uh, just one of my greatest accomplishments is just finishing this book because it'll it'll last forever. Uh, it felt really good um, as far as opening the doors. It allowed me to be on uh, like your your your, uh, your platform yourself. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, my big bro Andre Hatchet brought me on his platform, so it allowed me to uh, do a lot of webinars and stuff like that. I haven't been. I haven't done any speaking engagements. I definitely want to get to that point. I'm still learning how to market my book, and I kind of been focusing more on real mm -hmm. estate, but I got to get more focused on my book. But I'm still trying to fund, you know, my passion. So real estate is going to fund my passion, which is you know my book and doing coaching and stuff like that. But um, just um, it just the opportunity for like my mom and people to just buy a bunch of books and give them out. Like I now mm -hmm. do that. Like people can buy my book in bulk and give them out. I'm going to put my book in the library so that mm -hmm. y'all men can read it because that's what I go to the library. A lot of people sleep on the library, but I go to the library and get books. So, you know, I want my book to be there as a resource for somebody that might not have the $15. So it just feels good to be an outlet and, you know, be able to help people not just through, uh, you know, talking, but now you can read my, my content. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Again, congratulations to you, man. H. Cortez, same question to you, brother. Um, yeah, how did that, how did that, what was that feeling, man, to, to, to complete that first, that first project and, 
And uh, what kind of doors have opened up for you, man, since that time? Yeah, man, it is uh, an amazing feeling. There's nothing like it uh, because if you really think about it, guys, a lot of people say they got a book in them. A lot of people say they want to write a book. A lot of people actually start writing a book, but for whatever reason, never finish. So to get a book actually completed and to really just go through the process and realize when it comes to self-publishing, it's not as difficult. There's not a magical, mystical process that you have to go through to get this done. It's a matter of uh, maybe sitting with a coach or mentor, maybe using Google and some of the tools that are at everybody's fingers. But it's an amazing feeling. I think one of the greatest feelings when you did uh, the book review on my second book, which is Monetize My Life, Four Incredibly Simple Ways to Turn Your Passions into Profits. And from that book review that you did, I've actually seen people quoting my material, right? It's, it's kind of like what a rapper would feel like if they walked down the street and they heard somebody quoting one of their lyrics in context. I've seen people quoting some of my content because of what you did. Uh, and then I know when you come to legacy that my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, they're not going to be able to hear about my thoughts. They're going to be able to go and read my thoughts. They're going to be able to go back and look at my video archives and hear me speak my thoughts in my own words. And the amount of doors that have opened up because of authorship is uh, literally um, innumerable, man. Uh, podcasts, I I've been on dozens of shows, TV. Uh, the doors just, just fly open, man. And uh, all you have to do is be prepared to walk through them. But also, What's cool is having a, a product that you can sell from the back of the room after you shut down a speech or or you go on a webinar and you can send someone to uh, actually get your works after you've blessed their lives, man. Uh, that's an amazing feeling as well. Absolutely. You, you read my mind, man. I don't know. I, I want I want you all to understand this, right? It ain't nothing. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. You double for your trouble. Ain't nothing like getting paid. To go speak somewhere, and mm -hmm. taking this or two, three hundred dollars because you spoke and they won't buy your stuff. <laughs> that's you know what I'm saying. Like, hey, that, I mean, that's a five hundred dollar day in a three hour period. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Like, we're talking about taking uh, income to another level when you, when you, when you, when you become an authority in some space, and it's and you have products to sell as well as a story to tell, mm -hmm. right? Products to sell and a story to tell. Man, absolute phenomenal. Well, hey, we want to make sure, hey, we got to see if we can catch up on the comment. We want to make sure that everybody know where they can uh, get our stuff at. So we'll be popping up some websites. We, we'll allow you guys to go through that as well. Uh, Miss, uh, uh, oh, Bethany got something. She'll write a book that lasts for every part of your legacy. Absolutely. She says she'll be on stage building and establishing her speaker real platform in 2020, mapping that thing out. Uh, Lexi Dijon, is that the, uh, is that the, is that the, the, Mr. Al Mrs. Alford? That's that's my queen right there. <laughs> queen, she told me down. Yeah, that's true. There's a book that every black man needs on his bookshelf, especially if you're a single jumper from one toxic relationship to the next. Absolutely, man. Uh, Miss Yvette said, if I write a book about my legacy, it'll take a couple of days or weeks to think what I'm going to write. That way people can order my book. Absolutely, man. So let me pop up a couple of websites here, guys, and we'll go through and let people know where they can find y'all stuff. And yeah, I'll walk through that website as well. So we'll start with you, Miss uh, Miss Moore, uh, over at uh, EricaTMoore.com. All right, man, this is what this website looked like. So you just nav talk and navigate me, and I'll go wherever it is that you want me to go, Miss Moore. Uh, it it's on you. Okay, so let me see. I don't have my glasses on. So um, let's go to. Um, well, the first book, Mother's Time to Heal. So let's click on that one. Uh, I'm clicking. Okay, okay. All right. Well, can you go to the blog? Can you go to the blog? Then let's let's click on where it says more um, blog. Blog. Okay. Yeah. Let's go to the um to the blog because I have a blog where um, yay. So this is what I do every morning um. This is one of the doors that's open for me when you ask, like, what do we do? Like, what do I do? Mm -hmm. You know, um, how do I feel? So 
a lot of women. Um, I wish it was more interaction from men besides my husband, but um, a lot of women, you know, I write about things that they want to hear about that they can relate to. And my inbox are constantly flooded with, wow, that's my personal testimony. So even like in my books, like um, the last should be first. I write about things like I went through a horrific divorce. You know, um, Adolf is my second husband. He's, I wish I would have waited for him. Um, I wish I would have known him when I was 16, but I didn't. So that divorce, even though we were young when we got married, he didn't love me, I didn't love him. I tell people I went from jail to prison. I went from my mother's house to her rules, beating on me to my ex-husband's house, to his rules, to him beating on me. So I write about those things. And even though we separated, he made sure that he would try to make my life miserable. So here I am with four of his daughters, right? Raising our kids, I was homeless, right? Where he's a homeowner, where he's a businessman, where he's living the best life, where he's driving nice Escalades, but not paying no child support. $400 a month for four kids is nothing when he's making close to $200,000. So to me, the best revenge is success. I wasn't busting windows out, nobody car. And again, I'm straight up from New York. I'm from Long Island. You know, there's a little hood in me. You know, I can turn up if I need to, but uh, I'd rather pen it where I can, I can either kill off my character, right? Or I can injure my character, you know? You know, so I turn my pain into success. So I write about these things. And the response and the love that I get from this is amazing. It's better than amazing. So um, I'm just, uh, I mean, this is a great opportunity and I'm just glad to be here. Um, like I said, I'm not good at talking about myself. Put me behind a pulpit. I got you. You want me to sing you a song? I got you. But when it comes down to promoting me, as you see, my husband does it better. <laughs> well, well, you, well, you here tonight. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna promote <laughs> for you. And I absolutely love what you said, man. Turn you. This is very fun. So you, you th literally just said, "Hey, man, of, of all this stuff uh, that I've been through, trauma, situations, whatever, uh, instead of uh, uh, you know, you had an outlet. Your outlet was to write." And like mm -hmm. you said, I, you know, I, I might not kill him for real, but I'm gonna kill him in this book. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> so, like, you know, so, so that's absolutely fantastic, man. So, so tell us a little bit about it. You have the? Do you have your physical copy of your book? I have all my books. Yes. Uh, can you show us the, the last, the first, and talk to us a little bit about uh, this this book here? So this book right here. This this book, this book. So let me tell you about this book. The last should be first. I was last in love. Oh, 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 so everybody put in comments below. Everybody put in comments below. The last shall be first. The last shall be first. Go ahead and put that in the comments below. We want to make sure that you guys recognize it here. All right, go ahead, Miss Miss Moore. So the last should be first. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. So I told you I was um I was a teacher assistant at Windance Junior Free School District. Wasn't even making $45,000 a year at the time. My ex-husband, who's now my ex-husband, he was a um Retired military, not to mention he's a correctional officer, making almost $200,000 a year, paying $400 a month in, in child support. So that's $100 per kid, right, in New York, where rent is $1,800 to $2,100. So I became homeless. He talked about me. He called me a bum. But yet you have your whole mistress. So I write about this. You have your whole mistress, your whole three kids. And you wasn't taking care of your family and there was no help. There was no help for me. And welfare wasn't, they, they turned me down at the time. So how do I feed my kids? How do I take care of my kids? And I was so hurt. So I made a lot of bad decisions. So I'm going through a divorce. I'm going through cuts. He doesn't even want the kids, but he's fighting me. You know, he's calling child protective services on me. Every time I turned around, there was child protective services in my life. And the job I had, I needed my license in order to pay my bills to make that little forty five thousand dollars a year, right? So how do I how do I how do I get up? So I write about it. I, I, I was angry. I was hurt. My I have five girls, you know, and I was strict. You wasn't going to become pregnant at 16 years old. That was my story. That's not going to be your story. So they didn't like the rules. So CPS was called on me, false allegations. 
and I suffer. <laughs> Man, when I really wanted to mm, knock somebody out, I had to pray and I went to writing. So I write about that. So, so the women that I encounter, the women that I mentor, the women that I coach, but they're like, well, you don't understand, but I do understand. I, I was once you. So now look at me, you know, you see my story, you see my glory, but you don't know my story. You see the car I'm driving now, but back in 1994, I was, I was rocking a hoop, hoopy, hoopy. Now I can decide which car I want to drive today. Am I going to rock this Benz? Am I going to rock this Escalade truck? You know, and it's not about material things, you know, because my husband also is a financial consultant. That's what we do also. But it's about the fact that, hey, I made it. I, I, I made it. I mean, when, oh God. So I write about that. I write about being homeless. I write about, you know, having your heart broken, you know, falling for the wrong guy. And then even after my ex-husband, how did I turn around and get up in this relationship again where I'm homeless twice, right? So I write about stuff like that. And women are like, you're talking to me. My, my flesh, my flesh, what I wanted. I wanted chocolate candy. You know, I'm attracted to chocolate, you know, but chocolate wasn't good for me. Chocolate didn't do right by me. Chocolate wasn't keeping the roof over my head. The, the chocolate candy wasn't paying the bills. It just wasn't worth it. So now, you know, I had to learn who I was. I, I met a woman and then I'm done. I met a woman who said to me, the profit in you is fine, but Erica is messed up. And I was upset because... I'm preaching. What you mean? What's wrong with me? She was right. My heart. I was still bitter. I was still hurt. I still had to forgive the person that molested me. I still have to forgive the people who did not believe me. Right. So it was a lot. So I wrote about it and I got free from writing about it. And now I share my story. So now everybody knows that I was kind of talking about myself. Oh, man, this is absolutely phenomenal, man. Everybody put yeah. a write about it. That's absolutely phenomenal that you that you uh 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 not just you because you said uh, i i made it i, I want to add to that not only did you make it you made it through yeah important. you made it through because you still haven't made it you, you still got you still got there's way too much more going on left here for you to do but you have made it through as, as you continue along in your journey and thank god that he uh gave you the wisdom the wherewithal the courage to write about it instead of doing some other stuff stupid stuff that you could have done about it while you was making other stupid decisions so uh fantastic man yeah. absolutely man so again you guys you can check out uh the website uh www.ericatmore.com ericatmore.com uh you can find not only uh the, the the book that we just spoke about the last shall be first but she has other books uh and she has a playwright looks like she's got coming out as well a, yeah. a new book pre-ordered a preacher's wife she has sex lies and oh lord <laughs> That's what we want. That might hit me. He say she say so good. That's it. That's right up my yes. alley. Yes. <laughs> but yes. Sister, well, mother's time to heal and blending fragments, man. Make sure you guys check her out and follow her as well. The movement. Uh, she says she's a prophetess, man. You might want to reach out to her and follow that blog as well uh, and get some help if you are going through some of these things, man. Uh, hey, everybody need an outlet. If you don't find the outlet on your own, make sure you reach out and get that outlet that you need, man. Uh, Mr. Uh, We're going to come down here to the other relationship person uh, up in the house, man. Mr. Uh, Derek Alford is here. Uh, again, uh, both of you guys, man, I'm going to bring both of y'all along to the show. But Mr. Offer, man, if you couldn't tell us a little, let me pull your stuff up as well. Man, let me pull your stuff up here. Choose why, uh, choose wisely. All right. So uh, let me pull that up. Let me pull that up. I'm, I'm slow. I'm slow today. I'm sorry. All right. There we go. So we can find on Amazon. Choose wisely. The Black Man's Guide to Healthy mm. Relationships, man. Talk to us about this book, man. Uh, uh, and, and uh, yeah, just get, get to talking, man. Get to talking. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got down here at the bottom. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, go ahead, man. I had to bring you back up because you can't mm -hmm. hit. All right, go ahead. Uh, well, yeah, the book, just, I really wrote this book for the brothers to kind of help them because uh, my story is kind of similar to Erica's. You know, I was in a bad situation with someone. I wasn't married, thankfully. I didn't make that mistake and get married to her, but... Uh, with someone and you know she you know she she just did a lot of things that were real spiteful real nasty and you know sometimes we make mistakes we have uh, 
mm-hmm. kids with people we weren't supposed to be with, but you know, it doesn't have to be, I don't think like raising children doesn't have to be such a struggle, but sometimes when you 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 uh, get a child with the wrong partner, they can really make things so hard and just make it so challenging. And I was uh, just going through so many things, you know, with the child support and I was taking care of my son and I was still paying child support. I had him all the time. You know, you know, it's just a lot of stuff. So I just really had to get this book out because I wanted, because I see so many brothers that are in on child support, or just with women that are girls that are just not good for them, that are just bringing them down, not helping them, and we get caught up. And a lot of times we don't know because a lot of dudes I know and my crew we ain't have our dads. I didn't have mine, so I had to make all these mistakes. But also, it taught me what not to do, and I know what to tell my son, and I try to help in, as many people as I can. So. I wrote this book because this book is going to really make you really see within yourself what you got to work on. What, what do you want? What what issues are you struggling with now? It's going to help you kind of figure out like the person that you're dealing with. It's going to help you look at them. Are they a good fit for you? What is their family structure like? Does she have her dad? Does she have her mom? How does she treat her dad? How does she treat her family? Because that's all going to be a reflection on you. It's so much stuff that I, I learned because I, when I was in this relationship, I neglected so many signs because I really didn't know. And I want this book to just be that finger. Like, if you see this, you should probably kind of, you know, double check, make sure. But if you see these signs, you probably should not be there. It's kind of signs that you need to step away. You need to reevaluate some things. So this book is really just going to help you with yourself and also help you find the right person that's going to match what you're looking for you know, as a man and uh, just um, just help you with your life. And I, one thing I want to say is, you know, when you get the right partner, it will change your life. It will help you get to a crazy level. I can't explain it, but y'all talk about building wealth. I know Cortez and even you, brother Evan, you know, there's a lot of them people on that um, that are wealthy with wealth. It usually starts with a partner or having a family structure. As black people, we really got a lot of broken families, so we can definitely build wealth when we come together and make that family structure whole. And it all starts with choosing the right partner, and you can build from there. Man, absolutely, man. So I, I'm sorry I got to hidden just a little bit, but uh, so we can see the the, the uh, here on Amazon. Choose wisely, the Black Man's Guide to a Healthy Relationship. Everybody, everybody put in the comments. So choose wisely. Uh, you can uh, this again, the, uh, the Black Man's Guide. Now I'm excited about this book. Because because it's near and dear to my heart, I, I, I it, it's written for the black man or the young black man as they are coming up in the ranks and 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 I have a soft spot for uh, you know single mothers raising uh, boys and uh, and uh, I think your book will speak directly to that uh, to give them a uh, let's say a virtual uh, father figure as it relates to wisdom when dating or choosing a woman and i i mean we don't have i can't think of anything off the top of my head that was written for boys or for men particularly black men to help them choose a a, a partner I, I i don't see too many relationships book directed towards <laughs> towards me anybody i mean i don't know I, I can't think of one off the top of my head it might be out there but I can't think of anything that I heard that was written for brothers to be able to help them to, um, you know, make better choices as it relates to women. So, uh, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking about the show. I'm thinking about he say, she say, all that stuff as well. Uh, and we got two brothers here, man. Uh, Trevor, man, you ever any books come to mind that 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 you're like, okay, this was written for me as a man to be able to, you know, choose a partner better or something like that. Um, to choose a partner, no, I know. Um, I was on a webinar before with uh Derek with uh brother Andre Hatcher, he has a book called Um, A Black Man's Guide to the Altar, but that's more so about you know knowing that your partner that you're with is the one and you know the proceedings of marriage. But Derek definitely got got the money book right there with how to actually choose that partner from jump because the last thing you want to do is choose the wrong person and take them to the altar. Yeah, right. I, got the, I got like the prereq for that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, prereq for that one. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And hey, Cortez, man, what are your thoughts, man, on, on this 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 piece of work that Mr. Alford has created? Yeah. Uh, not only is it great, but you think about the time. I, I I didn't have my father either, but I think even if I did, I think the 
shape of the male mind at that time probably still wouldn't help me choose the right one uh, mm -hmm. because the false masculinity and the things that our forefathers were dealing with and bringing to the table it was a lot of male chauvinistic type stuff i probably would have driven a woman away from me uh, more than attracting the right one listening to some of that old stuff but now i think timing is perfect and i haven't seen anything else out there but when you think about this day and time and the importance of understanding what a true mate can do for you and with you uh i am celebrating 20 years with my queen uh january 5th so in just a couple weeks and i can't tell you uh how dramatically uh improved my life became when i got that stability of knowing that you know what somebody really got my back and somebody really gives me something to live for i, I say often to her that uh my wife uh, my mom gave me life, but she gives me reason to live. And I think every brother needs to experience that to to really get the best out of themselves. So great, great job on that, Derek. I think that's going to be a wonderful work. Definitely much needed. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, guys, man, uh, choosing wise, you got a bitly link down here. You can find it on Amazon at, uh, at obviously choose wise, the black man's guide to healthy relationships. I would say this. Let me add this as well uh you know it's a black man's guy so all of my sisters who may not have the mr mr around but you got a little mr that you're raising right get that book, okay and get yeah. that book for them. a lot of them uh, put that in their face make them read it and go through it and y'all go through it together and, you know obviously you want to add in your stuff as well make sure that you agree with everything but uh that's a, i think that's a y'all know what time it is right we're about about 13 days away from a big day and I don't know no better a uh, better way than to than, than to than to show your appreciation for somebody with a gift like a good book, right? Choosing wisely through that maturation process, man. Go and pick that thing up at Amazon. Support your brother, this black author, Mr. Derek Alford. Again, thanks so much for joining us here today and uh, sharing your work with us here today, brother. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's a short read too. I wanted to put that in as a short read, and it's it is kid friendly, so I made it for young boys as well as for older men too. So it's no age for that. And the ladies can learn something from this book too. It's it's made for the men, but you know I know ladies gonna pick it up and see what they can get because uh, a lot of ladies do do that, which I think is how you know they're ahead of the wave because they'll get on our platforms and learn stuff, you know, that we be talking about as men, and they learn and all that stuff too. So the ladies can get something out of the book too. Uh, absolutely, man. Thanks so much. <laughs> so, Mister Casselberry, we come to you, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, let me see here. Pull up your stuff. Uh, hidden mystery. There we go. All right, there we go. Okay. All right, Mr. Castleberry over here at uh, I am I'm a coastal.com backslash hustle man. Talk to us a little bit about your world. Let me pull this thing up for the people. Turn your skill set into your hustle. Turn your skill set into your hustle. Talk to us about your work, man. Uh, watch the people buy your book. Right. So number one, amacosa.com is my wife's website because she's the literary consultant for my business and editor and self-publishing consultant. We just push all our family books on her site. Um, the main reason I know this book needs to be purchased is as a business consultant for going on three years now, um, I've noticed the two main things people say when it comes to starting a business or even investing is one, they don't know what they can do or two, they have a, a biz, you know, a skill or a passion, but they don't really know how to monetize it. So that's literally exactly what the book is for. Either you're going to identify your skill set, and not only that, you're going to figure out multiple ways to monetize it because you can't just rely on one way of making money, especially nowadays with everything being so expensive. Again, I'm coming from a New York City mindset, so even some of the numbers that I talk about in the book, how much money I was making coming out of college and things like that you know, sound good, but in all reality, you got to understand how high the, the cost of living was. So um, as you see on the website, if you scroll down, um, I have a video there that my guy, Tim uh, Shot, uh, Getty Vision, shout out to him, um, where I'm going over uh, five of my favorite quotes from the book when I first wrote it. And, um, you know, I don't even remember the five that were there because that was when the book first came out. 
You don't want to ask. You don't want to ask. <laughs> but I got basically I have a new five, is what I'm saying. So some of the ones that one of the ones I saw in there is um uh collaborate with your competition with a main idea for that. And one of the quotes that people always use nowadays around me is um uh competition creates brand loyalty. So the whole thing is somebody may say they love McDonald's over Burger King, but if there was no Burger King, you really just like McDonald's, so it's the only one around it. Um, and the main reason I have to put in that quote is because there's a lot of people, let's say a woman that does makeup or, you know, a guy who wants to do business consulting, they feel like there's so much competition in their space that there's no place for them to come up and showcase their work. And the whole thing is you could collaborate with those same people. And number one, it'll help you bring in more uh, clientele. It'll show you to a new audience. But lastly, you know, it may be somebody who finds something that you offer that, you know, another person in your space does not offer. And that's what will create a lot of that brand loyalty as long as you keep the good customer service and things like that going with it. Uh, another one is the first quote in the book, which is the best way to make change in this country is with a pocket full of money. So um, if anybody who likes hip hop, they'll notice it's a double entendre. One, when it says to make change in this country, I, you could be talking about making money, but also to make change from a political or community community effort. And that's mostly about uh, teaching people the three main ways to even accumulate a large pool of cash, which is one, your cash, uh, two, a, a line of credit, or three, just pooling cash with people in your network. And then I tie it all together at the end of that passage with, you know, really you should be using a, a effort of all three. So really you should be pooling your, your cash, and your credit with everyone else in your community and network in order to make change that way your community you know no, no matter what com your community is uh, that way you guys are self-sufficient and not depending on you know government contracts or even other companies or other groups to come in and give you guys the necessities you need uh, my wife's favorite quote uh, and also one of mine is being a hustler is not about what you say or do but how you adapt to change so and now when i talk about different businesses like the difference between Netflix and Blockbuster and how Blockbuster was killing the, you know, the DVD or VHS rental space and they allowed um, Netflix to come in and take it over from a tech perspective. And then when Block, by the time Blockbuster decided they were going to start with DVD rentals and stuff like that, Netflix upped the ante with the app and the streaming service and it kind of just pushed Blockbuster all the way out the door. Uh, I talked the same thing with uh, between Amazon and Toys R Us and as you know, Toys R Us is now gone. Um, another one I have is uh, naysayers just show you how to promote your product, in which I talk about how I had a community mentor, I had a teacher at my old high school, and a lawyer that I know who, you know, we're actually the same age, she's from the Bronx as well, or pretty much tell me reasons why my business won't work and, you know, trying to teach um, financial literacy and business and investing in my community, you know, isn't going to work and people are dealing with different situations and not everybody could build a business and learn to invest and stuff. So pretty much every pain point that they said, you know, that people uh, couldn't learn a business or start a business with, I use that to start marketing my product. So it's like, all right, you feel like these kids are suffering with reading and writing and math. And so what's the point of teaching them business? Now I'm flipping it into the photo hustler lesson plan. So I'm using this book to teach them financial literacy along with the, the reader writing the math. Somebody else said, you know, people who don't have a lot of money, don't want to learn about money, yada, yada, yada. Now they have this book that's teaching them how to just take this skill set and turn it into money. So now you don't need the money right or jump. You just need the skill set, which we know a lot of poor people have a skill set, whether it's singing, dancing, talking, or whatever it is. Um, and then lastly, the community mentor is pretty much just talking about how Millennials make bad business uh, owners because of X, Y, and Z. So uh, one main thing I did was start uh, what I call it the Money Moves Workshop Collection with my business, Casterberry Consultant. And the last um, of the eight workshops that we did was called Millennial Money Moves. And it talked about the eight uh, different streams of income that everybody should have to, in today's tech-driven market. Mm -hmm. Um, so what that did was pretty much show that millennials are more than fit to become business owners in today's age, especially because of our dependency on technology. Uh, and lastly, which is the last quote in the book is talk your shit. Because number one, no matter what your, <laughs> what your skill is, what your business is, you know, or who's in your network, if you're not talking about it, there's no reason for anybody else to talk about it or support you. So those are my five quotes now that are officially my favorite after I've gone through the book. Um, one, you know, I told you the book has the quotes, has the passages. Each quote comes uh, associated with a highlighted uh, small black business. But there's also a blank page after each uh, passage where everybody, where, you know, whatever thoughts are sparked, 
while reading the book, you can get a pen and write in the book immediately. That way you don't have to worry about later on saying, what was that I was thinking about when I read that line in that book and things like that. Um, if you continue scrolling down, it talks about more, you know, it goes a little um, more into detail about what the book is about. So finding your niche, you know, owning the use of your skill set. So in that regard, I was talking about how I got into, I work in construction and uh, I learned more about getting into the government contracts because there's 24 seven construction in New York. And I wanted to, you know, at one point they were trying to give me a $2 raise, but I realized if I just own the company that gets the contract, I can get a 97% raise. So after that, you know, I got my business license as a government vendor and things of that nature. And right now I'm uh, working on bidding on city, state and federal contracts. Um, and then it would the book also touches on investing and negotiation. Um, but the second book will touch more into the, into the investing aspect of it. But the main thing is confidence and morals when it comes to your investments. And lastly, just avoiding complacency because that's something that a hustler just would always have to do because you don't want to be complacent unless somebody take over what you're doing. Man, you got some uh, quotes right here, man. The market <laughs> determine price, but you <laughs> determine value, man. Everybody put a cop's little hustler quotes, hustler quotes. Man, that's what I'm talking about, man. Uh, Mr. Castleberry, you guys check out his uh, book, pick up his uh, piece here. I, I, I am, I, y'all see the website. Okay. Blue.com <laughs> <laughs> uh, backslash hustle, man. Uh, absolutely love here what you got, man. You got boom, got a video, a real one pager here, uh, more information about the book itself. And then it looks like you got a, uh, uh, oh, well, they can order it. Yeah. And then your wife. All right, fan a bonus. Okay, wait a second. If you order a copy today, you get 60 percent of the hunter bundle, a family book bundle, a Cassidy Hustle bundle. Okay, yes, sir. yes, sir. <laughs> All right, fantastic, man. Hey man, turn your skill set into uh your hustle for the hustler by Mr. Trevor Cassidy, man. Thanks so much for uh being here today and sharing Thank your you. work with the people here on the black author speaker forum. Hustler quotes is up in the house, man. Hustle quotes up in the house. We'll catch up on these comments, guys. Man, Mr. Edmund, hey, man, Apostle Adolph is up in here doing his thing. You got another website here. <laughs> Get paid with Eric. He ain't playing. He said, hey, we go. Oh, successful Eric. Oh, we got two different. What is all this? Okay, you got some more. <laughs> all right, fantastic. All this stuff you got going on. <laughs> all right, for the hustle. She has, th she has three websites. Okay, fantastic. Hey, no problem, man. Hey, we're going to pop it up on the screen. Keep on typing. <laughs> I'm going to keep on popping it. Absolutely, man. And, uh, and, and here we have uh, guys here. Again, one of my good friends, man. Who uh, I'll tell you, man, Mister, me and Mister, Mister Thornton been doing some doing some major work together over the years, uh, all the way back to the formation of New Black Wall Street, which he was one of the one of the first few members uh, of us creating that. Um, and uh, he has uh, some phenomenal work with us here as well uh, with his new uh, new project, the Wealth Creation Playbook. So let me go ahead and put that, pop that up for you, Mister Thornton, if you could talk to us a little bit about your work here, brother. Absolutely, man. Again, thanks for all the work that you do, not just with this show, man, but just in general. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but my nickname for Evan is the executioner, man, because all he does is execute, man. Uh, he has an idea and he goes and makes it happen. But really, the Wealth Creation Playbook, man, is is uh, a short ebook that breaks down the six um problems that keeps people struggling financially man and and we are in a situation where people are working harder and harder but they're still struggling more and more uh and basically financial literacy is one but in general it goes a little bit deeper what about financial literacy must we really focus on learning uh taxes debt credit uh investing and entrepreneurship uh, i teach often that the Number one wealth building tool in this country is the United States well, uh, United States tax code. And the only way that you can access that tax code is as a landowner, an investor or a business owner. So uh, just like uh, Mr. Castleberry talked about understanding business from the tax perspective is a game changer. And if most people would go from employee only to employee slash business owner, that includes being an author, you're a business owner, you radically shift your position in this economy. 
And that's what the wealth creation playbook is all about. And then there's also a video component. If you opt in, you will get the instant pay raise training on how 150 million people in this country who work W-2 jobs only could actually qualify for an instant pay raise. They just don't know it. Uh, and then they don't know how to get it. So we kind of walk them through that whole process. And that ultimately leads them with uh, the ability to partner with me uh, in, inside of uh, financial success membership. And uh, we get into a lot of uh, the things that a lot of the authors talk about here tonight, how to really build wealth. And I pride myself on teaching the entry level, how to build it from scratch, right? There's no doubt if you was coming into a hundred thousand dollars, there's a, a gazillion people on this planet that can teach you what to do with that hundred thousand and turn it into 10,000, turn it into, I mean, sorry, turn it into a million, turn it into 10 million. Very few people, uh, and I know you're one of them, Evan, can help people go from scratch, take what they have right now, and that might be uh, uh, ingredients such as a little bit of desperation, a little heartache, a little talent, a gift here, maybe some hater rave from some friends who are downing them. How do you turn all, take those raw ingredients and combine them in a way, cook them up in a way that they ultimately will lead you to building wealth? And that's what my programs are all about. Uh, the Wealth Creation Playbook is a great place to start. We also have a fun Facebook group under the same name, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash wealth creation playbook. You guys can join that group and both of these resources are free for you guys to access and get on your journey to starting to build uh, generational wealth, shifting that mindset because that's what ultimately positions you to shift your income. Man, absolutely, man. The wealth creation playbook, man. So we got a lot of synergy here tonight, man. Thanks so much for being here. I see quite a lot of synergy, man. We have uh, uh, the, the, the pastor's uh, who's been through some things. She read some books. It looks like a little relationship going th stuff going on there. Then we got my brother Offer who taking a spin to the for the brother side in the relationship, man. We got Trevor up here with uh, business consulting and wealth creation or, or wealth uh, wealth building and stuff like that. Then the health mentor down here in the money area as well. And, and, and brother E just, you know, I just, I'm just <laughs> kind of all over the place that I got platform after platform that I created. We do got a question that came from the audience, man. Ms. G. Smith asked this. Are any of the books available via video via audio book? So has anybody created an audio book for any of the books that they have written? No, mine will be coming in 2020. All right. Uh, yeah, considering it, but I haven't haven't did it yet. Okay. Pastor, I'm, I'm I know I'm pretty sure Pastor has. Oh, I'm sorry, I got you on mute, my bad, because you got some background noise. Go ahead. I had some background noise? No, you had some oh, earlier. No. no, no, that was earlier. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, no, we're we're working on it. We're working on the audio book. Okay, audio book. Cortez, no. no audio book? No audio for me either. I, I do so much video content, man. <laughs> I didn't even think about doing audio book, uh, but that is a great suggestion. And uh, maybe I can get Miss Shida come read for me. I don't know. Uh, right. people, so, you know. What about podcasts? Anybody other than me and Brother Cortez, you got podcasts? Uh, no, I'm working on uh, the For the Hustler webinar series, which will be coming every two weeks on Sunday nights uh, starting in January. Uh, and I'll pretty much be feeding information from business, investing, and negotiation, as well as quotes from my book and uh, slides from my Money Moves Workshop collection. Okay, she oh. Smith there. She down, brother Cortez. Yeah, yeah, love it. Uh, uh, Miss Erica, what about you? Podcast. So my publicist is working on it. Miss Tanya, who's sitting here with me, so she's we we up and running soon, right? Yeah, we'll be up and running soon on our podcast. Okay, and brother Alfred, I know you uh, in real estate. What are you thinking about over there with the podcast, or what? What, what you got? Yeah, I want to do one. I just don't know how to formulate it yet because I told you I want to do something to help the brothers, but I don't want it to be no uh, complaining or gossiping podcast. I want it to be solution orientated. Mm -hmm. So I have to figure out how to do that. But maybe me and you or uh, brother Evan, we could. You have you might have some ideas or something. I don't know, but uh, I want to do something like that to get a podcast to help the brothers because this is something that's not spoken of enough. Because a lot of us guys, it's a lot of single fathers out here, so we all got stories that we need to get out there. So 
I'll figure out something though. I'll tell you this, man, because again, as as a uh, brother Casper said, it's, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. It's about collaborating, right? So right. Uh, once I once we do the show, that he say, he say, so you get that feel, then you see if there's something that you want to kind of do with that, or you just want to be a mainstay on that. You don't necessarily have to create your own podcast. You can be on the podcast we already got created. Um, so that might be something to not take away too much of your time and building that own thing. But uh, of course, as a black author speaker forum, what I what I promote is not just now that you have written a book or now that you got work out there, uh, then there's also these other things as it relates to speaking. Because as you guys are here tonight, uh, people are like, want to hear your voice. All right. Uh, they mm-hmm. want to hear the stuff that you have to say about what you have written about. And that's why this this question about audiobook or now I'm asking about a podcast, these turn into other streams of income that come from the work that you created. And so uh, Cortez said earlier um, that, you know, the book or being an author is a business and you can kind of take that so many different ways and so many of the afternoons as he said, he's doing a webinar series, things like that. So I want you guys to start thinking about um you know, if that's if that's where you want to go with it, right? Because some people just write a book just to write a book. I, I did, I, you know, I, I wrote a book to to make the biggest difference that I can, the biggest impact that I could, and I know that that includes all these other things that come along with it. Uh, my comment to all of you will be this: your uh, your book should become a mission of some sort, right? It should become a mission. Right, not just some literary work, but there's a movement behind mm-hmm. uh, your work, and that's just the forefront of that movement. Uh, Cortez, man, what are your thoughts about that? I know we talk a lot about that, man. Yeah, a- absolutely. In fact, it can very easily become the cornerstone of said movement. Uh, and some of my studies, some of the great marketers out there, and um, I- I, one in particular, Russell Brunson, talked a lot about. Uh, the three characteristics of a mass movement and that is an attractive character that is a future-based cause and um uh, the third one is escaping me right now but that book can kind of become the foundation and if you think about it most people come into this space or matter of fact they don't come into this space because they're intimidated and they think that they have to sell millions of copies and they have to create millions of followers and really all you need is 1000 real fans and i'm gonna tell you why Mm -hmm. because if you are making but a ten dollar profit on 1000 real fans that's 10k a month right so i think a lot of people Mm -hmm. get intimidated and they're starting to think that hey if i can't create a million followers, I can't make a whole lot of money. I come from a, a, a little bit of world of hip hop. We put out our first project back in 98. And a lot of people are like, what are you going to do? How are you going to make money? I'm like, if you don't understand anything, understand this, that I can sell 10,000 copies of a $10 CD and make a hundred racks. I don't need a big time publishing deal and distribution deal if my aim is just the money then I can flip the hundred racks into a lot of different things. So when you're coming into this space, I don't think you should be intimidated. I think if you're giving enough value and you understand the ability to leverage that value to make you some income, I I think this space is is truly amazing. Uh, And that includes all of the ways that we consume content, not just the written word, but also video, audio podcast and also images uh and things of that nature that's why instagram and snap do so well so i think uh when you start down this path and this process understand that all of those things are available to you and they all could be monetized yeah we have a question as well mr christian mcbride asks is uh who's blogging is anyone i know that mr moore you got a blog anybody i don't do i don't blog but (laughs) I don't I don't blog, but I vlog. I do video marketing. I do a video a day uh, at least. Uh, If you uh, go to my YouTube channel, uh, Financial Health Mentor, I do something called the Daily Hustle. And that's just uh, early morning video I drop to, you know, give some motivation and encouragement 
uh, and things of that nature, a wide range of topics. But Friday, it's all about money because I know money is on people's mind on Friday because they get paid. So I give a money tip every Friday, but every morning it's a daily mm -hmm. like, seven to 10 minute little clip. Uh, but then I also do a lot of other trainings and workshops, Facebook lives and things of that nature. So uh, I'm the lazy guy. So I, uh, it, to, for me to write a blog, it takes a lot out of me, but I don't mind turning on a voice recorder or hopping in front of a camera and speaking to you for hours. Absolutely, man. Well, guys, again, hit the like button, the share button. Uh, in the comments below, we'd like to like to know your uh, your thoughts on today's show. Again, this is a return of the Black Author Speaker Forum. Love to know how you guys feel about the uh, the production and the product that we brought to you here today. Uh, of course, for our, our authors, we want to say thanks so much for being here. I want to go over your websites again, and then we give you a final word uh, before we close this thing out. Again, we do have Miss uh, Erica Moore. You can find uh, Pastor Erica T. Moore by going to the website, <laughs> www.ericatmoore.com. Uh, we do have uh, Mr. Trevor Casabere with his book, uh, For the Hustler. You can find at that website that you see left. <laughs> uh, and then we have Mr. Derek Offer, man, with his uh, Choose Wisely book that you can find at the Bitly Link or at Amazon by looking up Choose Wisely. And uh, we also have the Financial Help Mentor uh, with his book, The Wealth Creation Playbook. And of course, you have none other than yours truly, ERGJ up in the house. You can find my book at theblackbillionaireclub.com. Not only a book, but a club that you can join as well. If you want to fix broke in your life, that's just what I do uh, at theblackbillionaireclub.com. Miss Erica Moore, want to come up to you, Queen. Uh, thanks so much again for being here as well. Want to give you some final words here on the Black Author Speaker Forum. What are your words for that uh, that author or that rising speaker uh, as they may be uh, getting over that fear and getting into their first piece of published work? What are your words to them today? I will tell them what the Bible says in Romans 12 and 11, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. If this is your gift and this is what you love to do, then do it. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of, you know, um, power, love and of a sound mind. So we want to just go out there and just be great. And my slogan that I will always say is that I'm riding my way into my destiny one book at a time. So don't give up. Just keep going forward and don't let fear, you know, determine your future. Man, one book at a time. Absolutely, man. Mr. Trevor Casterberry coming to you from another angle, man. As you think about your time coming through and uh, maybe getting ready to write your first book, what would the new you, the current you say to the old you? <laughs> what kind of wisdom would you have for your your, your old self? Uh, for my old self, number one, um, make sure every piece of advice you're giving out, you following it at the same exact time. Uh, mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time, you know, Put so much energy into my clients' businesses and some investments, I would push mine aside. And um, the one thing that made it all possible, you know, I was still able to live a good life and bring in uh, income was the fact that it was all things I wanted to do and things I was good at. And I put myself in a position to actually make money off of it as opposed to do it for free. Um, so definitely just keep on going what you're doing, but make sure you use an every piece of advice that you're willing to give out. Absolutely. Cassidy, man, thanks so much for being here today on the Black Office Speaker Forum. Coming to you from another angle, Mr. Alfred, as you uh, as we uh, come to you with your final words, man, what would you be your words to that brother as you as you help him to choose wisely? I would just tell him to definitely just look at the person, the, the, the lady that he's dealing with, look at how she's treating her family. Also, I would tell him to evaluate himself, make sure that you know he knows what he wants. Make sure that he's being true to himself and that he's not trying to, uh, you know, be something he's not. Because a lot of us, especially young men, when we don't have our father, we we try to be what we see on TV. We try to be what, you know, we think we want to be what we think the ladies want. And then we end up finding someone we don't want to be with because we were being someone that we were being someone that we weren't, that we are not. So if you don't be yourself, you're going to get someone that's not for you. Mm -hmm. kind of get what you attract sometimes or well, most times so i just tell them be be themselves and just watch them signs and you know, um get my book 
Right. And the first thing was just read my book. That was, that was right, right. the first thing. I read yeah. this book. Yeah, I read, my, my dad, man, all my life, man. Yeah, man, he'd be going here and ask him a question. But, man, did you go get the book? That's what he's always telling me, man. So <laughs> that was his advice. So we get the book. Read the book, man. I, 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 he get on my nerve. But, hey, that was good advice, nonetheless. Uh, financial health mentor, man, here on the uh, Black Office Speaker Work Forum, man. Your last verse for the people before we close this thing out. Man, uh, I would have to say that understand that you deserve to be wealthy. And you know how I know? Mm -hmm. Because God gave each and every one of us as a gift. And he said that mm -hmm. gift is supposed to make room for us at the top, right? Mm -hmm. Not at the bottom. So, uh, but one thing you have to understand is that while there's a lot of safety and security inside the comfort zone, nothing ever grows there. So you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable and go after your dreams and chase them like a man on fire or a woman. Absolutely, man. Well, creation playbook, man. Check it out. Uh, go ahead and pick that thing up. Ebook, uh, join the movement, all that good stuff. So all of you guys got resources uh, to be able to help you uh, from black authors, from our own. Uh, we've done a good job of reading and getting literature mm -hmm. from those outside of our community. Well, here's a way for you can actually practice group economics. Uh, by actually picking up some uh, literature from those that's inside the community. Uh, Miss Pastor, uh, Pastor Erica T. Moore did a great job with, her, with sharing her story and turning her pain uh, into, uh, into stories uh, that not only can entertain, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in this sex lives and church. That's still in my mind. <laughs> but you know, I love it. You know, I love it. From your thought process as well, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Cassaberry man for the hustler. I, I got a little hu hustler in me, so I'm looking forward to uh, reading through those quotes on, on a day. I'm actually going to add that in 2020, so we'll be reading a quote of the a quote a day from your literature for that nice. period. Fantastic. Uh, we've already talked to you, Mr. Offer man. Again, I just think so important, especially for the stuff that I do. So important to, to help brothers to choose wisely, man, and then obviously. Uh, me and Cortez, that's all we do is talk about building wealth, uh, leaving inheritance to our children's children, uh, the wealth yeah. creation playbook. Uh, for everybody else, man, again, let me see if there's any comments or so we'll catch up on that, man. Eric, uh, Miss Adolf still pushing, still pushing, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right, man. Yeah. Miss Memory said, All these wonderful authors have something to uh, us to learn from. Question is, I've got a website as well, Miss Goodrich, fantastic. I said, Cheryl Bryant, uh, 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 another, a mother more, uh, uh, disciple, uh, sex lives, get that book. Absolutely. Uh, say so again, thanks so much to the audience for hitting that like button, that share button. You can find us on YouTube also, uh, also here on Facebook as well. And this is just what we got to do guys. The thing is, uh, you know, this is positive reinforcement, great thing for our community. And I got to ask you, did you do something that was free? And that's simply just free. It's just hitting a like, a share, a follow, a subscribe, anything like that to help push positivity through our media that we actually create. Uh, see, we can do it all for all stuff that doesn't do well for our community, but will we do it for the things that we know we should be doing it for to help to inspire, to improve, and to bring light to the good things that are happening within our community as well? See, mass media won't do it, uh, but grassroots media, we absolutely can, but it takes each and every one of us to do it. Well, beautiful people, I want to say thanks so much for joining in, tuning in today to the Black Author Speaker Forum. And I want you to remember this, that it takes a village. It starts with us. Let's build as we climb together. We all we got, people. Matter of fact, we all we need. And thanks to <laughs> God, that's more than enough. Until next episode, you know what time it is. Mr. DJ, hit the music. New, new, new black, new. It's the new black Wall Street Book Club. New black Wall Street. With your host, Evan Jefferson. Evan. It's time for us to go. Yeah. Now, you ain't got a little computer. We encourage you to get out there and learn and apply. <laughs> you should learn the new black Wall Street Book Club. Book Club. <laughs> yeah. The new black Wall Street. The new black.